Hi, I'm Marty Griffin, Contact Center Instructor for Sunset Learning Institute. Today's topic is using a custom Java class in UCCX scripts. Our objectives are based on a question that was asked in class the other day by a student who needed to interact with a Java expert in regards to a special need that he had in a UCCX script. How do I interact with this expert who doesn't know anything about UCCX? And how can I talk with him when I'm not very strong with Java? So these are instructions for non-Java experts. And they, our objective here is with the help of a Java expert, we're going to show how to acquire a new custom Java class uh, to be used to determine if a credit card number is valid. In our example, we will ask the caller for a credit card number and then check the algorithms that are applied to that credit card number and see if that number is indeed valid or perhaps the caller has transposed some numbers. Uh, we'll demonstrate the administration process in CCX for enabling a new custom Java class for a Cisco Unified CCX script. And then we'll test the new script and the application to assure that indeed a credit card number is valid or is, is not valid. Some of the first things we need to deal with in this environment are the naming conventions themselves. If we're going to interact with a Java expert, that Java expert is going to be asking us what Java version we have in CCX. In our case, uh, we ask what's in a name. It turns out that Sun has a little bit of fun with their naming uh, conventions. Um, we can see a version number is 1.6.0. It turns out that that happens to be the developer's version that's necessary for some of the code out there. Or the customer facing version, the 6.0. Uh, and they are used, of course, these versions are used to identify the Java Standard Edition, SE. And it turns out that both numbers mean the same thing. Our version 6 is the uh, product version, and the full name is the Java Platform Standard Edition 6, and the abbreviation is Java SE6. Cisco delivers the product in, a, in the Sun Java runtime environment uh, for the UCCX products, or JRE. Uh, the Sun JRE 1.6.0 underscore 17 is the developer's version for 8.02. The underscore 17 um, is the update uh, version. Uh, so the 6 indicates the version and the 17 indicates the update. And that's the protocol they use for the naming conventions. Uh, for also example 8.51, uh, the JRE is 1.6.0 underscore 20, update 20. Uh, more information can be found at uh, Oracle uh, website there. And um, we invite you to go take a look and see what this naming stuff is about. But in any case, the naming is important. The versions are important to the Cisco expert who is ultimately going to uh, prepare a class file for you to use in your script. As further support for your uh, product there, uh, we'll visit the Cisco Unified CCX Software and Hardware Compatibility Guide. Um, in that guide, we find that for UCCX 8.02 SU3, sure enough, the Java version is Sun JRE 1.6.0 underscore 17. Update 17 is the version used. So be sure to consult your hardware, software and hardware compatibility guide for further information. A little bit about Java files, and the Java expert knows all about this, is they come in with three different file extensions. Uh, the lowest form is a .java file extension, and that's the source code. It's written in plain text by Java developers, and uh, it can, of course, be edited by Notepad or Java editors that are available to those folks out there if they want to modify that source code. The second uh, file extension is the .class file extension, 
and that is taking that .java stuff up there in the source code and compiling it. And of course, it has to be compiled in the same version as the system Java runtime engine, and and we know that as being the JRE version of 1.6 or 6.0 or 6. Uh, but that's important to the Java expert. Then there are .jar files. Uh, they take all these class files and image files and sound files and zip them up into a jar file. The application then reaches into the jar, that's a funny word, and pulls out the class file it needs and executes those class files or WAV files uh, or image files as necessary. And Cisco typically delivers their products within jar files. So you will find, uh, in many cases, the, um, the Java expert will probably be working in jar files when he gets all ready to work with you. So the question is, is how to acquire a custom Java class? And uh, first of all, we need to get alongside of our local Java expert uh, for assistance and explain to that expert what you're trying to accomplish in your script. That Java expert will explain what you're trying to do is implement for this example is known as the Loon algorithm or the Modulus 10 algorithm. And we didn't know that, but he did, and that's why we work with Java experts. The expert then will go out and locate uh, or create and compile a JAR file for our use. And our expert has created a JAR file for us at ciscoutils.jar and also told us what the fully qualified Java class name is at ciscoutils.loonacheck.jar. And here's some further information of the Loon algorithm there. And you can find that uh, at Wikipedia, of course, uh, the source of all knowledge. Then we need to examine uh, the steps to implement a custom Java class. We've acquired our JAR file from our expert, and now we have to put it to use. The first step that we will do is uh, to upload the JAR file in CCX administration applications document management, uh, we'll load that file up into the default uh, path up there and into the class path. Uh, here you see the Cisco Utils JAR file it has been placed up into the um, uh, document management area and uh, we're getting ready to use that. The second thing we need to do is move that JAR file into the class path. And as we go into CCX administration, Custom Classes Configuration under System, uh, we find a, um, uh, available class path entries that would have been over here on the left side, and we have pushed them over into the selected class path entries. And that's pretty much preparing our system now for use of this uh, class in, uh, in our scripting. The third thing we need to do is restart the engine and the administration service. Um, this is um, the book basically tells you to restart the engine. Uh, here we've gone to the serviceability page of CCX and we've gone to control center network services and found and restarted the Cisco unified engine. Well, what the book doesn't tell you is after that engine completely restarts and you get everything going again, you need to go in and restart the Cisco Unified CCX administration also. And that's after, of course, you start the CCX engine. Now, this applies quite heavily in the older versions of CCX. Um, and in the newer versions, it still pretty much applies. Uh, we won't be able to find or make use of that new class uh, without starting the administration the second time. Next, we'll start the CCX script editor, and um, we will find a new class will be available to us called Cisco Utils in our case here. And um, here we are attempting to create a new variable in the script editor, and we observe that one of our choices on the pull-down menu uh, under type is now Cisco Utils. So when we create our new variable that we'll be using, um, we'll be using that type of, of variable there. Next, we need to create a script with a new Java class in it. 
we'll show you that script here in just a minute. But the keystone of that script is a variable, is a Boolean variable called isValid. And the value of that variable will be either true or false, depending upon the value down there that gets calculated um, by the algorithm of Cisco Utils Loon Check. And can you see here that what he's doing is he's checking the value of the credit card number. That is a variable that got stuffed at the beginning of the script when we asked the caller, what is your credit card number? And we put a 16-digit credit card number in this variable. Uh, this uh, arrangement here is basically using the algorithms to make sure that the last two digits of the credit card number are the same as the last two digits of the credit card number that the caller gave us. If not, if it didn't work out that way, possibly the caller has transposed some digits or given uh, basically the wrong number in here. So if, a re if the credit card number is valid, uh, this will return a true, and the is valid Boolean var variable will have a true value. If the credit card number is a miss of some way, uh, then the value for is valid will be equal to false. Let's look at the script here for a second. Um, once we get the script built, uh, we need to validate, upload, refresh the script. In application management, we need to select the script to be used for the application. We need then to dial the application trigger, see if it works, and we're going to use a real and phony credit card number for your test. With that, I'm going to pull in. Uh, the actual script editor for this script, and what we'll do is a debug session. I will open up all the expand all the steps here, so we can actually see the steps here. And here's our key: is this script called is valid here, and uh, we see by default it is false here. With that, we'll go ahead and dial up a uh, application number here. And that application number in our case is 8,000. And we've already set up the debugs for this. How do I know that? Well, oh, well, we have debug and pending responses. There are actually two pending responses here. That's a good thing, because the first time we call it, we're going to give it a bogus credit card number. And the second time we call it, we're going to give them a good telephone number. So let's give this a uh, little call here. And we should be able to hear our dialing. And here we see, I'll knock that down, make that a little bigger for you. And we'll start through the debug session by using the step over button here. Oh, yeah. We'll accept that call, and it'll quit ringing when we accept it. And then we're going to ask the caller for a credit card number here. So we'll be using the get digit string step for that. Opening up the properties here a little bit, uh, we will see uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to prompt them for the credit card number. And we're going to prompt them with this information here. Please enter your 16-digit credit card number. And that's going to be done with text-to-speech, a pretty common way for developers nowadays uh, to be developing. They didn't have to record any prompts for this. Uh, they can just develop away. Let's hear what the text-to-speech has to say. Please enter your 16-digit credit card number. I will enter 4444-5555-4444-5555, and we will have succeeded uh, with this get digit string. Here we're going to go down to a label uh, to say if valid or if we effectively got a good um, a telephone number out of them. And then the key to this is this set is valid, set the variable is valid to be whatever the result is of this class uh, that's going to evaluate a variable called credit card number. Looking at that credit card number, that's exactly the number we just poked in there. And we expect this false down here to remain false because I gave it a bogus uh, credit card number. Uh, here, we're going to do a play prompt here, and uh, this is uh, going to use text-to-speech, and we're going to say credit card number, and then we're going to concatenate the actual credit card number on there and spell it with the S function here. 
And then we're going to check the is valid variable. Uh, and if the, if the, if it's true, um, the is valid will say is valid. If it's not true, false. Um, it will say is not valid here. So we expect it to say is not valid uh, in this situation. Let's hear what the script has to say. Credit card number four 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 five 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 four 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 five 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 is not valid. And sure enough, that credit card number was not valid. We'll knock that MIVR script down here, and let's attempt to call that number again. This time we'll give it a valid credit card number. Uh, please don't write this down. I know you folks are out for Christmas shopping. All righty. And we'll get down past the accept step and give the lady a credit card number. Please enter your 15-digit credit card number. So four zero one two eight 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 one eight eight one, and the script is happy. Got its sixteen digits, and we'll move on down here to set is valid to be the valuation of that credit card number. There's our credit card number, and I see the is valid here is false. If I execute the step, that false turns to true. That is a good credit card number here, or at least it passes the algorithm check. And now we'll play a prompt that says it's valid. Credit card number 4012888888881881 is valid. And we'll end that particular script. Okay, well that was fun, wasn't it? Anyhow, we have tested the script. We're pretty happy with what has happened, and we can move on. There is a lab exercise here that we designed for our students here uh, with special files uh, that uh, could be acquired if you as the viewer would like them. So what have we done? We've successfully interacted with our Java expert. Uh, we've expressed to that Java expert precisely what it is we want to do. We want to check a credit card number while in the script before going out to the database. I'm going to check to see if the caller might have transposed some numbers or given us a, a bad number or misdialed. A, the, credit, uh, the Java expert, of course, uh, will know all about the Loon algorithm technology and will acquire that for us and develop a a jar file that we can then import into our system and use it in our script editor as we have seen being done already. So successfully uh, we have actually used a uh, Java object here, a Java class, and uh, this is uh, pretty cool. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. If you need some example files in the script, you can contact Marty Griffin at Sunset Learning. And that uh, email address is mgriffin at sunsetlearning.com. Um, hopefully this has been helpful to especially that student who asked that question last week. Thank you very much for attending. On behalf of Sunset Learning, we thank you for uh, taking a look at this. And hopefully this is helpful to you in your endeavors during the, the work week. Thank you very much.